this is John Rinaldi doing another one in my series of IT stuff for control engineers. So as control engineers, we, we, we as I've talked about in previous videos, we need to use NATS once in a while, network address translation. Today's video, I want to talk about the wrong way to do it, how not to do NATS. Let's, let me tell you what I'm talking about. So let's say we have a switch. And on this switch, we've got a number of ports, and we've got a, we got a PLC, and we, maybe we've got a drive, and we've got some I.O. devices here, and so forth, okay? And this is uh, a little machine, maybe, okay? Um, there's, there's a one port that maybe we dedicate as a, as a, as a WAN port, and this, this particular switch, you know, somebody says, I, you know, I want to access, we want to give access to this PLC. This goes up to a, of course, goes up to some kind of a router up here and off, off into the, the IT world. So, this P, we, want to give, we want to give some access to, the PLC, to this PLC out to some, some of the applications out on that router and in the, inter, in the enterprise. So, what are we going to, how are we going to do that? So, we're going to do, so this switch, Oh, this switch has a NAT. Oh, wonderful. So we can, we can use that, and we'll use, set this up as a NAT. So we take, let's say that all of these devices in, 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 this, in this area are, are in this machine are 168, 192, 168, 200.0. So I'll just put zero here because this, you know, PLC maybe is 55 and the drive is 60 and this is 70 and 80 and whatnot. So that's, so the PLC is 192.168.200.55. But we need to give it an address that's going to work out on that. So the, so we're going to take this switch and we're going to say, hey, okay, take this, uh, this PLC and give the PLC an address of 10.10.5.50, uh, so that's the, that's the PLC's address. That's the PLC's address out here. Well, you know, that works, really. So an application out here can, can said, send a message to 10.10.5.55. The switch is going to translate it from 10.10.5.55 to 192.168.200.55. Hey, everything's great. What's the problem? Well, there's a number of problems here, okay? First of all, this is this is this is you typically very difficult to implement. I mean, well, not difficult. It's just that it's awkward, and and these 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 kinds of devices use typically use something called CLI. All right, C command line interface. That's an that's a notation. So there's a you know you got a prompt, and if you want to make it do something, you got to say I don't know NT you know, x dot x dot x dot x, and, and then y t this, you know, y dot y dot y dot y. You got, you got to know all of this really arcane stuff in order to set this thing up. So the first, the first problem is an ease of use problem. You know, it, you, have to have, you have to have some level of knowledge of this, this arcane CLI technology to, to use this thing. But that's not a killer. That's not a killer, right? You know, sure, we, it's, it's not easy to do, but we'll figure it out. We're engineers, we like figuring things out. So the second, the second problem, though, is that you've got, anybody can access, can, can talk to this, right? There's no security here. So if we've got a PC on a, on a laptop out here, and this, this application is supposed to talk to the PLC and get some data out of it. Yeah, that works. Uh, it can, you can use this But also, everybody else up here who's running any other application or anybody just happened to be in the building and wants to talk to that PLC can do it too because hey, there's, there's, no, there's nothing stopping anybody from, from using this device. And that's not so good. And also, if what if there, you know, lots of times we have now embedded switches. When we have embedded switches, this drive has, you know, the dual switches. So it has 
as two RJ45. So, but uh, in this application, we're only using one of them. So the robot guy, the kind of guys coming in to work on the robot says, hey, I can, I can, I can hook up to that. And he, he takes his laptop and, and, and hooks up to that extra port on the drive. And, and now he's got access, and he can go up through this switch. It's a switch. So if, you know, and anything can go, can go up that route. So there's no security at all. There's nothing stopping anybody from doing anything they want here. If you're up on the IT network, you can access anything you want down here. If you plug into this network, you can access anything you want up there. Not a great way to go. So that's the, you know, that's the, that's, that's, so that's where we sit. So what are we gonna do? We got something that's really kind of awkward to use and it's very insecure. Well, there's a, there's a solution. There's a, there's a, there's a, a, a product out there that, that makes this a lot, a lot easier to use. And I'm going to take you through that right now. Uh, but let me, set that, let me set that up for you. Let's take this same application, 192.168.200.0, to 10.10.5.55, and let's do it through a secure device. OK, so now we're going to do an actual demonstration of how to, easy it is to set up ICS Defender. So I start with Google Chrome. And the address, we're, we're, we're directly connected to the configuration, well, the configuration network, the next port on ICS Defender. And that's at 168.200.1 here. And so that's going to come up. It's going to say, hey, that's not private. Well, that's OK, because we're directly connected from my laptop right to the front. And we get the welcome screen. We say, let's get started. we got to log in. The default username is admin. The default password is ICS Defender until you change it. So we log into that. Now we're logged in. And so it says, hey. Do you want to use the simple NAT wizard? Well, yeah, we do. That's exactly what the purpose is here. So this is going to do initial setup of Defender. And this is the screen for, there's just a few things we'll just change here. So the initial setup, I want to call my, my Defender. I'm going to call it Defender RTA instead of the default name. I'm going to not change the password. The interface mode, it, could, it did get an address from DHCP. I'm going to change it to static because I like to use a, I'm using a little different subnet here for my testing. So 10.10.5.1, mask of 16. So that's on a network with uh, 16 bits of subnet mask. The IP address that I'm connected to for that direct connect for that LAN configuration IP is 200.1. Yeah, we're not going to change. There's no reason to change that. And then, yet yeah, we want to just add a one-to-one -one NAT. So, that, so that's all the configuration we need to do to, to, to make Defender work. Now let's just add a NAT. So there's only three fields we have to configure here. On the northbound interface, we're going to say, as we had on the board, the address we want is 10.10.1.55. The southbound address, the address that of the PLC we had on the board is 168, 192.168.1.55. 1. Dot, oh sorry, 192.168.200.55, and then this is we can put a description in test that, and then that's it. We'll just add it, and we are actually at that point we are done. We just have to apply the changes. Gives you a little summary screen of where you are at the bottom, and now we're done. So let's take a look around, and we don't have to do this, but we're actually it'll work right now. But let's just take a look around, and see what we did. So virtual IPs that it, it created 10.10.1.55 is a virtual ID. Okay, that's good. So that says, and it's slash 32. That means there's only one address that can be used. So no other addresses can be used to get at my PLC network. That's great. If we look at the uh, the NAT rules. We go to go to the one to one NAT. We can see the NAT is there. Yep, we've got an external IP on the WAN of 10.10.1 to 55. That's connected to one in the internal IP 192.168.200.55. So what happens is is any address 
that its C's of, of 1.55 is going to get converted from 200.55. And then let's take a look at the firewall rules. And then the rule on the fire, and then it created a firewall rule for us right here at the top. It says that any IPv4 message from any source and any port can go to that destination, 200.55. So right now, anybody can go there. It also added a couple of other rules for uh, a, f a firewall rule to allow a ping, so you can check the ping. You can, and also one for uh, HTTPS messaging of TCP on here too. So it'll it, it, it's going to let uh, it just it created a couple of convenient rules. Now we could delete these rules over here with the trash can, or we can edit these rules. And if we edit, if we go in and edit this, we could restrict now that traffic more. We could restrict a particular port number on that. We could say that more addresses can be accessed on that lower level network. We could say only if we selected any single host or alias here, we could go and put in a, an address here and say only these groups of addresses or these only this particular address can get at it. So you can customize these rules as much as you want and we're not going to do that right now. We're just going to go back to um, firewall and um, now well, we'll just go over here to the main page and look at the so this is the stat the dashboard page you can see it's all well organized really easy to read easy to use that's all we have to do the, the system is working so okay so that's a you know that shows you how easy it is to to build it using this device this device is called the ICS defender and the reason that I'm telling you about the ICS Defender is because I found this to be the easiest to use, best device for doing NATs and for doing remote access and a whole host of other things that this thing can do. And here's, here's the advantage to it. So with the, with, instead of that, using the ICS Defender, what we're doing is we've got one port that's our WAN port that's plugged in just like that. And we've got a couple of other ports here that can be used for, uh, that can be used for LAN ports. So this port would be the one that talks to, uh, talks to these devices. So we could have another, we could still have the switch here just like we do now. Now, what's the difference is? The difference is by putting the ICS Defender in here, the ICS Defender, not only do we get great ease of use, but we also get a deny by default default setup, meaning that deny by default means that all traffic, if it's not explicitly authorized to go through here, is stopped. So if in the case, as we said before, that somebody plugged their laptop into this and, and said, hey, we want to, you know, I want to go surf the web and go up to, go up to that enterprise network. There, would, there is a firewall built into this. And with that firewall, there's no rule that says that you're, you on your laptop can go through and talk to that thing. The rule says if the PLC could go that route, the PLC from, from 192.168.200.55 can talk to this address, can talk to this, ad, can talk to an address up there. The source can be this and it can go off. But anybody else can't do it because we've got deny by default. So we've got a much more secure solution. The same thing going down. If some other device up here wants to send a message down into this network, that's also going to be denied by default in, unless you specifically create that rule. So with the ICS Defender, we get not only great ease of use, but we get built-in firewall rules. And as you saw on the little video I did of, of how to use this, it automatically builds the firewall rules for you. So not only, you don't even have to build them yourself. So it's a very highly secure, the best way to go about building NATs. And also, if once you put this device in here, you also have remote access built right into it. 
So you, can, you, get, you, get two thing, you get two great big applications, two advantages to using the same box. Plus, I can tell you, you know, I'm not going to talk about it right now, but there are about 30 other things this thing can do too if you want to get really fancy and sophisticated with it. So I'd urge you to, right now, there's, a, there's a, a link right on the screen where you can find out some details about how to get this device, what the, what the, exactly what it does, and a place where you can get, uh, get some additional information. So I urge you to please go and take a look at that. And if you have any questions about it, to contact me. I'd be glad to talk to you about how you should use the ICS Defender for your NAT applications in the future. Thank you.